happen for them without them doing anything. For example, I mean, when I was born, I met my mom praying the prayer, God give us leaders after your heart. When my mom clocked 70, you know, and, and that was about 11 years ago, she was still praying the same prayer. And I said, is it that God has not answered this prayer of give us leaders after your heart? Because you cannot just be praying the prayer without doing what you need to do to ensure that the right leaders are elected, you know. So it is the same way people just, I mean, well, from what you said, near religion is basically people trying to stop it trying to stop an attitude which can actually be an integral part of your goals for the new year but it's even not enough to set the goals because i've seen a lot of people set goals uh, I, I i run classes where i realize that people don't achieve whatever goals that they set because they did not go beyond putting the goals on paper into creating the strategy that can um that will enable them score the goals but it's not even just putting the strategy there has to be a change of character a change in your patterns because if you set goals for example uh, and i see that a lot in my classes where people say oh this is the goal for example if someone sets a financial goal and the financial goal requires you to meet new people to create new networks and the person says i am an introvert i don't like people you know that if the person sets the goal year in year out the person is never going to meet the goals because the person has created a self-sabotaging beliefs that makes the person feel, you know, I I, I can't go out, you know, I, I hate rejection. And once you, as long as you have that belief and you insist on that pattern, you are not going to create anything new. So whether you set resolution or you create resolution and say, you know what, I'm going to stop drinking in the new year, um, it, it's still an integral part of your goal, goal, goal setting, or you set go, goals proper the most critical factor in all of this equation is you and until you take the necessary steps which comes with pain because the you last year the, the what makes you made you do many of the things you did last year was as a result of the pleasure you derive from what you feel and until the pain of not achieving it outweighs the pain or the, the, the pleasure you feel you're not going to change anything and unfortunately many people enjoy the pleasure even if though they claim they want something new they enjoy the pleasure that they don't they don't mind not scoring good because again there is no consequences for not scoring your goal it's not as if somebody's going to line you up and say if you don't score your goal you won't move it into the new year and because there are no consequences people just take them as mere activities they lift it up to god and pray over pray it over, and yeah. expect to just help them achieve it oh praise you. i mean that is spot on it's what you see all the time but since you're a proponent of setting goals or new year resolutions whichever way just semantic just ensuring that you want to do something new with the timeline to it if you want how best should anyone go about making the resolutions or setting goals in the new year okay um i always say to people that um one of the things that our people again has been um, exposed to which i think is very dangerous is the concept of new year and of month you know um if i have my way i will place a ban on it you know and i'll begin to talk about a decade resolution or the your goals for the next decade never forget that growing up in nigeria you know everything government says they're going to do you know um, housing for all by the year 2020 2000 never happened vision 2020 never happened you know so our people are not used to creating long-term goals japan has got 300 year goal um uae has got a vision till 20 21 17. you know a typical nigeria struggles to go beyond one year because number one people don't even trust their capacity to live beyond the next one year and that's why the concept of empowerment becomes a critical a big 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 deal you know among africans because why do we talk about empowerment because people are always afraid that maybe they may not go into the new year as if the devil from january to august is more powerful than the devil from september to december and people cash them out on, on, on that as well now in setting your goals i would always ask people what kind of life do you want for yourself because the best way to predict the future is to create it, right? And so in creating that future, can you project into the next 10 years of your life or the next 20 years and say, what kind of person do I want? What kind of result do I want? Now, when you are very, very clear about the kind of human being you want to be, the value you want to have to humanity, 
then that should help you dictate the kind of goals you set because once you are clear about the, the person you want to be then you now ask yourself what type of body do i need to achieve this right the kind of body becomes your health goal what kind of financial cloud do i need to power this life i want to live that becomes your financial goal what kind of um you know um formidability do i need or sector do i need to operate in that becomes your academic or your personal development goal you know so that is how to set goals by the time you do the long term one you now scale it back to say okay 10 years time where do i want to be who do i want to become You're right then you scale it back to year one which next year to now say what first steps do i need to take because you see situation for example i mean every church has declared is our year of this is our year of that so some church can say it's our year of you know harvest how do you harvest when you have not even sold any seed in the last five years you know so you realize that people get confused gift for someone this year should be a year of personal development or a year of networking you know but beyond before even setting the goal you have to check the last five years the last 10 years where were you 10 years ago what did you say you're going to achieve you know are you where you want to be what were the things that stopped you what kind of relationship did you have that stopped you i mean when i do these things you realize that immediately people leave class and they go and uninstall themselves from several whatsapp group from several groups several societies that has not added values to them because most of those groups are distracting but they didn't know but once their eyes becomes open to know that these things are a distraction they become laser focused to now say okay i now know who i want to be what is the health requirement body requirement body shape requirement for that person so that determines how you eat how you rest you know and your basically your strategy for your health now in nigeria you know you have to do preventive meds because many doctors have left the country now you you now ask yourself what financial clout do i need based on who you want to be you now say okay this is the amount of money what kind of job am i going to get into a business am i going to get into so that is how to actually set goals not that you just sit down and say there are 12 areas of my life this is my goal in this area i bet you in in fact looking at the workload you'll be frustrated but when your goals are cut out after the life you want to to see it makes it easy because then your health goal now becomes the health the body requirement that the ultimate you demand and with that is it becomes very easy to 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 go after these goals In, indeed the appropriate word here is um, setting goals as against resolution but then uh, for some for some individuals, uh, the word New Year resolution could mean uh, uh, changing certain things around them, their behavioral patterns, their addictions, and all of that. So uh, somebody would not tell you that addiction could be a set goal. Uh, sadly, you mentioned drinking when you started this conversation. I'm sure some of my friends out there don't want to hear this conversation around drinking as an addiction and being able to want to change uh, moving forward. How do you begin to work around issues like addictions? Addictions, uh, I think, primarily has to do with resolutions here. How do you begin to deal with addictions into a new year and stay through to it? Eyes on the ball, focus on the, on the set, set aim. Yeah. Praise. Okay, like I mean, when you resolve that you're going, you're not going to um, drink or you're not going to smoke, or you're not going to do some of the addictions because addiction is basically an uncontrollable compulsive appetite for an activity that keeps reoccurring. So what makes it addictive is the fact that you have tried, you have prayed, you have told yourself, I won't do it again. Let John go kill me, or Amadio kill me, or God kill me if I do this, and you find yourself doing it. That's what makes it addictive. It must be uncontrollable. It must be compulsive. Now, if you say you're going to stop it, now you are not likely going to stop it because there are two motivations in life. There's what we call away from and towards. And that's why the word becomes what goes as against, you know, resolution. Because if you say, I'm not going to do this, right? The, the mind does not have the capacity to process don't, won't, can't. The word, the mind picks the action word and it activates that and makes it your reality. Now, if you want to stop a particular addiction, the first thing you need to realize is that you cannot stop it on your own. That's in the Western world, there is the alcohol anonymous, you know, it's all over, right? I even run some of those sessions for people, right? You first have to ask yourself, what pleasure do I derive from this activity, right? Once the pleasure is clear, then you'd now begin to ask yourself, what pain is it costing you? 
because unless you are able to clearly see the pain is costing you how is what is costing you what is costing your loved ones you know how has he affected you if you can't clearly articulate some of these things you are not going to change these things right and once that is clear you will need a therapist or coach or someone to walk you through you know the process and the person has to monitor you and so you don't just say um you know i'm going to stop smoking when you do a packet of cigarettes every day right you, a realistic goal will be okay i'm going to reduce a pack of cigarettes to maybe three steaks per day right once you achieve that in one week and you're working with the person and the person says okay so what activity do we divert this into when the pressure comes on you because your body is already adjusted to smoking one pack so how do we distract your body distract your mind in a way that we divert it into something else now if you are stopping an addiction you have to replace it with something else that gives the same pleasure as the addiction you are stopping so what is going to be that stop guard that helps your body readjust back to default so if you do three sticks as against one pack that is progress, right? Now, after a while, we can now shift the boundary a bit and say, okay, let's reduce it to two sticks. Let's reduce it to one. Now, at the level of one, is gonna be a hell of a fight. But after that, if we have created an empowering activity that gives you the same pleasure as the cigarette, then we can finally move you to that activity. So it's not something that people can do by themselves because at the end of the day, the quest to do it by yourself. And you know, people in, in our country, they, they can't stand shame and they don't believe that the person they're working with, you know, can keep their confidentiality, you know. So after a while, and if they don't want to move away from the group they belong to, after a while, they will slip back because it's very, very easy to slip back into an addictive behavior oh. than changing it. So it's a lot of neural work that once the mind changes um, about something and the body adjusts itself to it, then we can really stop an addiction. You know, <laughs> Dave and I had this discussion before we came on, uh, even though uh, very shortly, with, the, with I, the fact that we all, don't we all make New Year resolutions? At, we want to be better at something. We want to worship God the more. We want to lose weight. For some of us, we need to hit the gym. We want to do so many other things. I've mentioned why it seems very hard for people to keep up. But I'd like for you to share personal experience, especially for those who this might help as to how to surmount the urge not to follow through our goals in the year. First, you, you talked about the major things that cause distraction and sometimes the killing of such said goals, outright killing of such said goals. That's one. Then two, how could they, in the climb that you know and understand, praise, uh, stay above waters, and get the goals, you know, going. Get them because uh, I've, maybe they can. Yeah. Um, I, I, so I'll share personal experience because uh, everything about goal scoring for me started about eight years ago in Nigeria. I was like every other person. I'd written goals. My pastor said, "Bring the goals to church." So I was lifting it up to God, you know, on thirty-first of December. And as I lifted it, I felt I had a voice say to me, did you achieve your goal for last year? And my answer was no, did you achieve it two years before. I, I said, no, did you achieve it? So I, I projected, I mean, I, I casted back to five years ago. I've never achieved my goals. Why didn't I achieve my goals? So I realized that I don't even know how to achieve the goals. So I resolved that year. I literally thought it, I was crying in church. And I said to myself, the only thing I'm going to do in the new year is to go after people that I can find who have exceeded their goals. And so, and, and before then, I've gone for all kinds of goal setting meetings. So I followed all those people that we find in Nigeria and outside Nigeria to find out what were they doing differently. I went to interview people. Guess what? Everything I found that they were doing was not taught in any of the classes I've been to. Right? So it then dawned on me that maybe many of the people teaching us have not actually scored their goals themselves. So I began to realize that number one, they had clarity. And all the people I interviewed, their goals were set after the kind of life they wanted to be. Number two, I discovered that these people have what they call internal capacity. What does that mean? So I, I every human being listening to me, you recruit people into your life every year, consciously or unconsciously. So there is always like five to 11 people that you talk to frequently, that you listen to frequently, that, I mean, those are your first 11. 
So your life, when it comes to goals, becomes somebody who wants to win the World Cup. And life has given you the opportunity to recruit your first 11 players into your life. But you have recruited, recruited emotional players. You have gone to your village to go and call all the people you like, 11 of them, and say, you know what, come. I'm going to put the Brazilian or Argentina jersey on you. Let's go to the World Cup. I believe we're going to win. You are going to literally lose. That is what people do, right? So by the time I check the people in my life and their capacity to have helped me score my goals that I wrote, I realize that I've chosen people who don't even meet their goals, who don't have capacity to help me achieve anything, right? And so that's the second thing I found. So what did I do? I articulated the kind of person I wanted to become in 10 years. Then I began to look at my internal capacity. I chose 11, my 11 intentionally. Some of them, I didn't even have a relationship with them. I had to go after them to say, you know what? This is the goal I want to, I want to score this year. I need you in my life. And this is the role I want you to play. So I had a goalkeeper whose job is to keep me laser focused. I had my defenders whose job is to ensure that I'm not bullied. And when I'm about giving up, they put me back. I had my midfielders whose job it, it, it is to help me scout for opportunities that can help me score, achieve my bottom line. Then I have strikers who are my partners who collaborate with me to score the goals. Then I have my reserve bench who are I network individuals who, when I am almost close to shame, they can step in for me. By creating that, and I found it with all the people I interviewed, by creating that, it changed the dynamics. And the number three thing I did was the, my tactical formation. Now, Nigeria, for example, I mean, my health goal, I knew I couldn't afford to get sick, you know, because our health care has got a bit of a challenge. So I knew I needed to eat right. I needed to, for me not to fall sick, I needed to find out the most critical part of my health. So toxicity, I mean, uh, so I began to say to people, all around me is positivity. So whenever I'm in a meeting and somebody's talking about, you know, there are demons that want to kill you, there are people that want to kill you, I literally walk away because my goals and my belief system must not accommodate or incorporate that right and so once i did my tactical formation to say based on the nigeria that i am what are the things that are likely going to stop me the industry i mean i wasn't in an industry that doesn't even exist because literally i had to work with a few people to create the family life sector in nigeria you know so we went headlong we knew okay it might not be profitable initially what are the low and game food what are the value chain we designed it so i went headlong i knew the odds will be against me and i knew how to you know go against that based on the reality of my country then number four thing will now be your coaches i hired a coach for myself that could hold me accountable so there were things that I used to do that my coach had told me you need to stop it. But every time you do them, you pay me a certain kind of money. I grew up in Ijebu. I hate to pay coaches any amount of money for default. So I have to respect myself that even when I don't feel like it, guess what? Yeah. Some of the things I did were crazy. Yeah. I was finishing a book every day, The Science of Getting Rich. I read it every day. I finished it every day, right? And by doing all these things, by taking myself away from groups that did not help me achieve my bottom line true, by true. uninstalling some of the friends that yeah. never achieved and putting new people guess what that next year by the seventh month yes. i exceeded my goal for that year it was magical Fantastic. so i know this is a science that can work if people are willing to make it work fantastic praise i think uh, uh, the the fundamental factor here is the people you you must surround yourself with people that could propel you towards achieving your set goal. Absolutely. Uh, that for me yeah. is my takeaway in this conversation. Praise for uh, thank you so very much for your time with us as uh, as we go into the new okay. year. I really want to believe that um, our viewers have taken something away from this conversation, especially the addictions. Uh, very key conversation, <laughs> praise. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Always you. a pleasure thank having you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. All right, people. Wow, fantastic conversation here. You heard it all from the from the expert there. Uh, it's about you. You decide um, if you would achieve your set goals or like people call them, uh, resolutions for the year. We'll go on a break when we come back. We have one more conversation for you on the show. Uh, don't go away.